welcome this morning and thank you for joining us this is the second part in our series that we've entitled big questions may be blessed and inspired this morning by god's word our reading this morning is taken by vera good morning everyone today's psalm is psalm 11. in the lord i put my trust how can you say to my soul flee as a bird to your mountain for look the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire and brimstone, and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteousness, his countenance beholds the upright. We miss you. Our song this morning is entitled, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. It's a beautiful song with wonderful words. May be blessed by this wonderful song.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, this morning. We acknowledge our shortcomings and we acknowledge that you are the creator of heaven and earth. Thank you, Lord, that we can come before you. Thank you for your love, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ and the salvation that he has brought to us. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for hearing our prayers. And thank you that we can be confident that you will answer our prayers according to your will. We know we are living in difficult times, Lord, so we pray that you'll be with our world. We pray that you'll be with our fellowship at Marlow Baptist Church. We pray for those who are watching and listening. May you be with us all in this time. May we look to you. May we spend time with you. May we grow in our faith in this time. Please speak to our hearts this morning. May everything said and done this morning truly bring you honor and glory. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. We acknowledge our sin, Lord. We acknowledge our shortcomings. and We pray that you will help us. Thank you for the forgiveness that we have found in our Lord Jesus Christ. But help us, Lord, to live for you. Help us to be able to turn away from those things that stop us from serving you the way that you've called us to. Help us to be committed today afresh to you. Strengthen us, Lord, as we commit ourselves to you, Lord. In your wonderful name we pray, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. This morning we are considering the second question in our series, Big Questions, and that is, why so much suffering? I take a reading from Revelation chapter 21, reading verse 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Suffering is real. And there is no one that is immune to suffering. Because we are part of this bundle of life, we are all affected by suffering. From sickness to disease, to distress, to poverty, and also death. The issue of suffering is real and it needs to be confronted. Many shy away from the issue of suffering, but it's important for us to truly be confronted with that this morning. But there are some questions we have to ask related to suffering. If God is good and God is all powerful, why is there suffering? That's a real question and an important question. And we need to turn to God's word to be able to answer that question this morning. In 1755, there was a great earthquake in the city of Lisbon in Portugal. That earthquake killed more than 50,000 people. The earthquake had a great impact in the life of the French philosopher Voltaire. He wrote a poem about it. And from that earthquake, his thoughts moved toward atheism. And especially today, as we know, structured atheism. That earthquake was the catalyst to his atheistic thoughts. World War I and World War II killed millions. Millions lost their lives. Not even to talk about the, the wider range of destruction that the world wars caused. Many turned their backs on God because of the suffering that they saw, saw in World War I and World War II. In 1966, in a small town in Wales, Aberfan, there was a great disaster that took place. 116 children lost their lives and 28 adults. That village still suffers the consequences from that loss. Even 54 years later, they are still struggling with it. Suffering is real and it affects the way that people think and reason. And therefore, it's important for us today to consider suffering. And why is suffering so difficult? The reason why is because it's personal. It is personal to you and it's personal to me. I don't believe that the theory of evolution or scientific thought is what causes most people to turn away from God. It is because of suffering, because it's real, because it hurts, and because it is personal. Now there are three causes of suffering in our world. The first is natural disasters. Because of natural disasters, there are, are people that are suffering greatly. 
through earthquakes and tsunamis and, and hurricanes and all of these things. And because we're living on this planet, we will be affected by natural disasters. So that is a great influence in the way that we see suffering because people have lost their lives through natural disasters. Secondly, we also see that moral decay is a great cause of suffering. Because of sin, because of the way that the human race is, therefore people will suffer. Murder, rape, destruction, theft, uh, deceit, all of those things cause great suffering. Within marriages, divorce, and uh, relationships that break down, all of those things cause great suffering in the lives of people. And it's because of moral decay. And thirdly, it is also because of generational decisions. Because generations before make choices, that impacts the current generation. We have all been influenced by decisions our parents and grandparents have made, and even great-grandparents. Those choices have influences on our lives. So when we consider suffering as a whole, there are so many factors to consider when dealing with suffering and so many causes of suffering. But the question we also have to ask this morning is, does God care? And John chapter 11 verse 35 is the shortest verse in the Bible, but so profound. It says, Jesus wept. When Jesus saw Mary and Martha's reaction to the death of their brother Lazarus. Jesus wept. Because God understands, God cares, and God feels our hurts and pains. That is why we know with certainty that God is with us in the midst of suffering and he does understand. But it is still very difficult. So what is the cause of suffering. I take a reading from Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 to 19. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you will bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree, of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. From dust you are, and to dust you shall Return. God created this world in perfection. It was perfect and it was good. That is what the Bible says. But sin entered into this world because of Adam and Eve and the choice that they make to disobey God and rebel against God. There was a consequence. That consequence has impacted the world since then. And it's because of that sin that entered into the world that we see suffering today. There are two areas in which that rebellion of Adam and Eve has impacted the world. The first is the creation itself. As we see in, 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 in Genesis chapter 3, that, that basically the fact that Adam and Eve sinned, because of their sin, that influenced creation itself. That creation itself is cursed because of Adam and Eve. The book of Romans chapter 8 tells us that the creation itself groans and travails and waits for the time where God will return and restore the earth. We see that the earth itself is struggling. And therefore we have all of these natural disasters because the earth itself is cursed. Disease and sickness is part of the reality of living on this cursed planet. And it is difficult. But it is the consequence of sin. We also see that that consequence impacted humanity. The fact that we have death, and pain and suffering is because of Adam and Eve and because of the choice that they made to disobey God. The book of Romans chapter 5 tells us that by Adam, sin entered into the world. That through Adam, it has affected all of us. 
our genetic makeup is affected by the reality that we are the descendants of Adam and Eve. And therefore, the cause of suffering is sin. And the question we have to ask is, why does God allow that? And that is a difficult question. And that is what we are going to answer through God's word as we consider what he has to say about suffering. But the cause, the beginning, the, the, the genesis of suffering is because of Adam and Eve's disobedience. But it's not just the fact that it's suffering is because of creation or because of humanity as, 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 a, as a people, but also because humanity is immoral, that humanity is sinful. And because of the immorality and because of the sinfulness of humanity, that has great consequences within families, within uh, societies, within communities. So the consequences of sin is felt throughout humanity. The, the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche wrote that God is dead. That was his, his phrase that he coined. But when he said God is dead, he bemoaned the fact that that is a reality. And he actually said that because God is dead, that the next century will be the bloodiest. And he wrote that at the end of the 1800s. And the next generation, of course, we have the First and the Second World War. When God is removed and man is only sinful, only concerned about himself, there is only one consequence, and that will be the greatest suffering that we will ever see. And the greatest century of suffering we've ever seen has been the 20th century. And because of that, we see that people have removed God. And because they've removed God, it has left us with great consequences. So the cause of suffering is because of sin. That is the reality. But we also move to the complexity of suffering. Because yes, we can understand the cause, but what is the complexity of it? Because suffering is not as simple as just saying, well, it entered through Adam and Eve, and that's that. Because the reality of suffering affects all of us. And it's difficult sometimes to comprehend. Losing a child. Losing a husband. Losing a wife. Terminal illness. Death. All of these realities are so difficult. And that is what suffering really is. It's not about losing um, some financial security or losing a job. We're dealing with losing something that we can never get back. And that is very, very difficult. But when we look at the scriptures, we go to the book of Job. The book of Job is the book of suffering. And what we see are two very important chapters. The first is Job chapter 1. And what we see in Job chapter 1 is that God does not cause suffering, but he does allow it. And God has allowed suffering. And he has a purpose in that. But he allowed that. In the life of Job, God allowed him to suffer. But we also see in Job chapter 3 that Job himself, when he is suffering, curses the day that he was born. He's upset. He's angry. He is distraught with suffering. So we see in the life of Job that he truly suffered so much and that he struggled with that. It's physical and it's mental suffering. Sometimes mental suffering is far worse than physical suffering. But we have to ask, why does God allow it? We see in Job that God does allow it. We see that Job struggles with it. But the question we ask is, why? Every single saint in the Bible has suffered and struggled with the issue of suffering. From Abraham to David to Elijah to Paul. So if you and I are struggling, if we really struggle with the reality of suffering and we are angry and upset about it, it is not just us. It is every single person struggles with that. And what is so amazing is that God allows Job to struggle. That God allows him to be upset. That God allows him... To, to wrestle with God and wrestle with concepts. Even cursing the day that he was born. God allows that. Because God understands human emotion. He understands frustration and difficulty. But the issue of suffering is still complex. And the reality is that the complexity of suffering is 
is twofold. There are some sufferings that we go through, some things we go through that's outside of us. It's because of choices other people have made. Other people make sinful choices, irresponsible choices. That impacts us within families. Sometimes choices parents make impact the children. Sometimes choices the children make impact the parents. Sometimes there are choices made externally or outside of a home that impacts the home, whatever that might be. But the complexity of suffering is it's not just our choices. It's also the choices of others. But most of our suffering is because of choices that we make as people. Every choice has a consequence. We make choices and therefore we suffer the consequence of that choice. But do we suffer because we are worse than anyone else? No, not at all. I take a reading from Luke chapter 13 as Jesus deals with the complexity of events and suffering. So Luke chapter 13, I read from verse Verse 1 to 5. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Jesus acknowledged that people suffered not because they were worse than everyone else, because all of us are in the same boat. We're all part of this bundle of life. But there is suffering that is because of choices, because of choices people make, and therefore there are consequences. But sometimes we suffer not because of our own choices, our own sinfulness, but because of situations. In, in the text here we see that Pilate was evil, therefore people suffered. And even those who either built the tower or just the event of the tower collapsing caused the suffering of many. And therefore the issue of suffering is very complex. And it's important for us to have sympathy and empathy for those who are suffering. Because sometimes we don't have the answers but we know that God is there and therefore Job chapter 38 is so important that throughout the complexity of Job's suffering and Job lost his family his children died he lost all his wealth he lost his health he really struggled and throughout the complexity of Job's suffering in his life we get to Job chapter 38 and Job's had 37 chapters to complain and be frustrated. And God allows him that. God gives him that grace. But then God says to him, okay, now you need to listen to me. Were you there when I laid the foundations of the earth? Have you told the oceans where to stop? Do you know about the storehouses of snow and hail? And God tells Job that you need to trust me because I am the creator. That yes, you are suffering and it is difficult. But trust me. And therefore, in the complexity of our suffering, as difficult as it is, in our own wrestling with it, and people's wrestling with it, we need to sit down and be quiet for a moment and know that God is the creator. He is the sustainer of life. And he is the almighty, all-powerful God that we need to trust in the midst of the complexity of our suffering. And then finally, is there comfort in suffering? And I believe there is, definitely. There is so much comfort that we can gain from God's word in the midst of suffering. I take a reading from Hebrews chapter 2 and I read verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Is there hope in the midst of suffering? Yes, there is. Is there an ultimate hope in suffering? Yes, there is. And all of those hopes that we have in suffering is all found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Has God done anything? So many people ask this question. We, have see, we see so much suffering in our world. Does God care? Why does he not do something? I believe he has 
done something. He's done everything. And what he has done is give his life. Jesus Christ came into this world to deal with suffering, to deal with death, to deal with sin. He suffered to deal with ultimate suffering. It's not death that is the worst issue for us. It's not physical suffering that's the most difficult. The most tragic and most frightening thought is eternal suffering being separated from God. Jesus Christ came, he suffered, he died to deal with sin, with death, and with suffering. He has done everything. God has done everything to deal with suffering. And in Jesus Christ, there is hope in the midst of suffering. Therefore, when we ask, why is there so much suffering? It's because of sin. But Jesus Christ came to deal with sin. So we need to turn to him to deal with suffering. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 also says the following. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Jesus Christ died. He suffered to bring us close to God, to bring us into a relationship with God. And therefore, we can, as Christians, with confidence say, when people ask, why does God not do anything? He has. And he has in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. But how do we respond as Christians in the midst of suffering? Romans chapter 8, verse 18 is a, is a passage of great encouragement to us as Christians. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So Paul, in writing the book of Romans, acknowledges suffering. And God inspires him to write about suffering, that the current suffering that we are facing is nothing in compared to the glory which shall be revealed in heaven. And we suffer. And we suffer as Christians because we are part of this world. We are not immune to suffering. There is no passage from Genesis to Revelation when dealing with people that tells us we will be immune to suffering. Paul the Apostle himself, when he was saved, in Acts chapter 9, verse 16, God says that he will suffer many things. Jesus said that in this world we'll face tribulation, but be of good cheer. That's in John 16, 33, that he has overcome the world. So we will face suffering. But as Christians, we have hope. And that hope is found in Christ and in his work within us, knowing that we are here only for a short time, as the book of James says. Our lives are but a vapor. We are here today, gone tomorrow. So we will face suffering, but we know that there is eternal glory that waits for us. Our suffering does not separate us from God's love. Our suffering does not mean that God has left us. Romans 8 is clear that nothing separates us from God's love. Not even suffering, not sin, not death. We are in Christ. Therefore, there is nothing in this world. The choices others make, the choices we make. And sometimes we stumble and fall, but nothing can separate us from the eternal love that God has for us in Christ. So how do we respond in suffering? Because suffering is part of God's purpose in our lives as Christians. Yes, firstly, we suffer with others so that we can have some empathy and understanding. We see that in the person of Christ. He suffered so that when we pray, we understand that the, the God we're praying to has also suffered, understands that suffering. Also, we can minister to others because we suffer. But also suffering is producing character in us. That God allows suffering to help us to, to be more uh, focused on our Christian lives. Suffering produces character in us. Suffering also makes us acutely aware of our need for God and for Christ. See, God uses suffering in our lives for a greater purpose. Therefore, it is difficult that we will cry tears and not even know how to comprehend the realities of suffering. But in Him, we know that He is at work in our lives. He's allowing this to produce something greater 
within our lives. Even at this time of this terrible pandemic, we are seeing God work in the lives of people. We are seeing the fact that the church is able to reach more people in this time. And also for us, it's giving us time to reflect upon God. And therefore, it's important to see what God is doing in the midst of suffering. And then finally, not just how we respond to, to suffering as Christians, but what is God doing through suffering in this world? C.S. Lewis calls suffering God's microphone. That through suffering, God speaks to this world. And God is using suffering in this world to let his voice be heard. Because without suffering, no one would ever ask the question, why? Without pain, we are not concerned about the realities of life. Therefore, God has to allow suffering so that those around us can ask the question, why? Why is this happening? Like Voltaire asked the question of why, but he wasn't interested in the answer. He turned to atheism. Many will ask the question, why? And when the gospel is shared, when the realities of Christ's death and resurrection, his suffering for us is shared, therein we find the answer to suffering. Does God care? Yes, he does. Why is this happening? Because of sin. But Jesus came to deal with sin. In the midst of the question, we find the answer. And the answer is our Lord Jesus Christ. So why is there so much suffering? It's because of sin. And our only hope to deal with sin is found in the cross of Jesus Christ. In conclusion, there's a beautiful passage that I just want to refer to it's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, reading verse 16 to 18. And I just read that. It won't be projected on the screen, but I'll just read that to you. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Or we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We have an eternal hope in Christ beyond the suffering of this world. Let's hold on to him and therefore share with others the hope that is found in Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you acknowledging that we don't understand the full picture of life. We only know what you have revealed to us and there are certain mysteries for us. And suffering is one of those. We know that you allow suffering. We know that you use suffering. We know that there are times when you cause suffering on those that are evil and those that have rebelled against you. Lord, generally we suffer because we are part of this world and we pray that you will help us to understand and help us to share that hope with others. Please, Lord, help us to understand. Help us to draw closer to you. And please be with our hearts that, that are hurting in times of suffering. Help us to look to you. Help us to find our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Please strengthen us, Lord. And thank you for the hope that we have in you. In your wonderful name we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and join us next week for the third part in our series, Big Questions, as we consider, can I trust the Bible? May you be blessed and inspired this week, and our final song is a beautiful song, There is a Hope. May this song truly encourage you this morning. Thank you for joining us, and see you next week.
So 